The best speech to text transcriber for Final Cut Pro just got better. I just released Captionator version 2.0 and it comes with a ton of new features. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Captionator, then go through the three biggest new features, and I'm even gonna include a bonus, which might help you with some of your workflow. The biggest change though, is that Captionator now has Whisper AI, which is the best speech-to-text transcription engine there is available right now. It supports nearly 100 languages and will even translate your text into English. Beta testers have been using it for a few weeks now and they are loving the new features. So I'm really happy to get it out there for everybody. Now, if you have Captionator version 1.0, this is a completely free update. Just go to the Mac App Store and hit the update button. I also created a Discord server so you can share your tips and motion templates, but more on that last point later. So when you first open Captionator, you're gonna get the tutorial window. So you just wanna click the right arrow and on the first page, you're gonna get the option to install your export destination. You have to do this, otherwise the rest of the software is not really gonna work very well for you. So click install, and you're gonna now have an export destination uh, in Final Cut. Go back to Captionator, and you can follow the rest of the directions, but I'm gonna cover everything in the tutorial series in this video. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your Final Cut project, whatever project you're working on. Now, I'll recommend that you make sure your audio is nice and clean. Uh, I would recommend using the voice isolation feature if your audio is at all noisy in it. And I also recommend disabling any of your music or sound effect tracks. So if you click over here on index and then on roles, you can then disable your music track or any sound effect tracks you might have. Then go up to the top right, click export to Captionator. It's gonna ask you for some settings as you normally would expect when exporting. It should be fine as is, just select audio and click next. You'll notice a little spinning dial at the top left hand side that's gonna show how long it's gonna to take to export to Captionator. That's a final cut thing. And then you'll see the export screen in the middle. It's only gonna take a few seconds to transcribe it. This video is about a minute long and took less than a few seconds. Now you can just pick whichever style you want. I particularly like the Top J style, which is named after my friend, the one and only Jenny Hoyos. From there, make sure auto open is turned on and click generate. Final Cut then gonna open up, select the library you wanna import it to, in this case, the Osh 2023, and click choose. It's gonna import. Now, because I've imported ones before, it's gonna ask me if I wanna keep both or replace. In my case, I'm gonna keep both so that I have the old one as well. Now, if it gives you an error message saying it can't find the file, just uncheck auto open and then click the generate button. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save the file. In my case, I would generally recommend somewhere where you can find it fairly easily, like your desktop, and then click save. Go into your finder, navigate to your desktop, and then double click on that caption that it exported. And then all the directions are the same. Select your, select your library, click choose, keep both, and then double click on it. All your captions are now generated in there in whatever style you're looking for. You can always go back into Captionator and change the style to whatever you want if you ever change your mind midstream. Now just highlight either the captions at the top of the screen or the titles. I'm just gonna grab the titles here and hit Command C for copy. I'm gonna go back to my project, move the playhead all the way to the beginning and hit Command V. And there we go. There's all of our titles, all synchronized. Now, there is a bug in Final Cut. You'll notice that the titles here are all appropriately timed. But if I go back into the ones that I just pasted, sometimes Final Cut will arbitrarily add some extra spacing in there. So what you're gonna need to do is just grab those titles. I prefer to turn on snapping and then drag them over. I don't know why Final Cut does this. It's just some weird bug in Final Cut, but just keep an eye out for it. And because it sometimes shuffles it over, it'll sometimes, sometimes remove the last caption as well. So you can just go back into there and grab the last ones as well and put them back on. Now the last step is to remember to turn your music back on so that when you export your video, it's got all your sound effects and music. You can also undo any other voice processing you might've added just for Captionator, but Using the new Whisper engine, you're probably gonna be fine without making any audio changes in the, in the first place. Now, the last step is if you wanna move those titles. So by default in Final Cut, you'll click on the title and move it, but that doesn't really work if you've got 100 or 200 titles on the timeline. So what you can do instead is highlight all the titles you wanna move, move your cursor to a scene that you know you want it to not cover something up, and then use the little visual transform tool at the bottom left. Wait for that to pop up and then just drag your title around to wherever you want it. 
from there, turn that off, and now you'll notice all of those titles have all moved at the same time. It makes editing this an absolute breeze. And I know from history that this is usually pretty good. And last time, I think I just had to change, yeah, I had to change names, things like that, things that have weird spelling. And from there, it's basically ready to export. You can also make other changes to the titles as well. If you want to say, make something have some extra emphasis. Say I want Lake Winnebago to be in blue. Well, I can just go over into my title page, scroll down to my face and change this color to a blue. And there we go. Now that title is blue. Now any type of title animations or styling you, you can possibly think of is totally capable in here. This is just using standard Final Cut titles. So that means you can do anything you want to it. It's all up to your own creativity. Now for those of you using Captioner version one, you know Siri had a bunch of little bugs and that's why I've upgraded to Whisper AI. It is much more accurate. I'm even a contributor over to the Whisper CPP project and I contribute new code to there all the time. So to get into the Whisper settings, you're gonna to wanna to go into your Captionator menu and click settings. And there's a lot of different options here for you. The ones you're looking for is which engine you wanna use, the Whisper engine instead of Siri, and which model you wanna use. Now I've got three models installed. By default, the tiny multilingual model is installed for everybody. And I find that it's more than good enough for most people. For myself, in the latest several videos I've done, I've used the tiny multilingual model and I've had to make almost no changes to the text but there is other models you can use. Now I'm gonna include a video in the tutorial series below that's gonna go through all of the intricate details of Whisper and all the different settings because this that's too much to cover in one small video like this. Now the next big feature is one that's a lot of people have requested and that is a inline text editor. And you can get to that if you click on the advanced button and then you'll see the edit text button here and just click edit. And once you click edit, you'll see all the titles as they would appear in your transcribed text. Now, if you want to change what these do or how they kind of work, you can do this automatically by clicking on the titles page up here and adjusting some of these. So say you want to make sure there's always five words per line, you could just drag this little slider to five words. And say you want to have two lines for every title. Well, you can go down here to the multi-line and select two lines. Then you can click the little regenerate button at the top right hand corner and it regenerates them automatically for you to give you a nice preview. Now you can also edit these manually too. So say for instance, you're like, oh, well, you know, this word ground is kind of abandoned on its own. I want that as part of the titles before it. You can just go and delete the white space before it. And there you go. It's gonna retain the timings as well so that if you're using any of the advanced animations, they will be timed correctly as well. So two new lines always indicates a new title, whereas one new line just means a multi-line version of the same title. Here's another one. We can get rid of more and move that up. There we go. And now it's ready to go. So I can click auto open again, click generate, select my, my library, keep both. Here's my number 11. And you'll see there's those titles as they were in the editor. Now, if you have large titles with lots of letters in them, you're probably gonna to wanna to change the font as well and make it a little bit smaller. And you can do that over here in the style by going into the font and adjusting the size, maybe down to like, 75, 73, click generate, keep both. And there we go, those fit a lot better. Now this last feature I'm the most excited about and it's probably the most complicated feature in Captionator. It took me months to get this thing right. And that new feature is custom motion templates. And I'm not talking about just changing some of the style like the font or the colors, but fully animating anything you can come up with. This is easily the most powerful feature of Captionator. Now this is way too big to fit in this video, so you'll have to watch the tutorial series to see all the details about how to make your own. People are gonna be posting their creations onto the Discord, so if you don't wanna create your own motion templates, you can just download those. Now the best way to show you how this works is to switch over to a different style, and we've got a couple built in. One's called Karaoke, and the other one's called The Final Cut Bro, named after Dylan Bates, The Final Cut Bro. He has some great tutorials for how to use Apple Motion, and if you're interested in making your own styles, I would highly recommend checking out his channel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna include a link in the bio below. So let's click The Final Cut Bro. You see all the advanced title options here. These give you all kinds of capabilities to adjust things. Animate is where the magic happens, and 
we're gonna have that in the tutorial series. You can go back over here into the edit text, click regenerate, because it does update these settings over here. Now they're a little bit, probably a little bit more accurate. And click generate. Keep both. And go and select that. Now you'll see the text is a little bit too big for the screen. So that means we're probably gonna need to change either the font size or how many words are on each line. So let's go and do that. So let's start by changing the font size. So we're gonna change that down to about 35 here. And then let's go over onto our titles and change from words per line from six. We're gonna change that down to three. And we're gonna do multi-line of two. Hit regenerate. It's regenerated all those titles. We're gonna click generate again. Select our titles, keep both. And like magic, those now fit a lot better. And that will actually synchronize all of that, all those titles directly with the text that's actually showing on screen. Now I promise you an extra bonus tip, and that comes from having a full transcription of your entire video. So what I sometimes do with my videos is I copy the text and open up ChatGPT. So I'm gonna go into ChatGPT and say, and ask ChatGPT a few questions. Make, make me five titles for this video script. Shift enter, paste, and there we go. It's come up with five separate titles and I can pick whichever one of these I want. You can then also ask it further questions like I uh, make a description of this script suitable for a YouTube description box. Perfect. So that's that's something useful as well. So if you're doing searchable content, this can really help people find your video. Now the biggest tip of these is pulling out the most interesting parts of the video. What are the three most interesting segments of the video? Perfect, now it's given me three separate portions of that video that I can go and pull out. And now I can go back into Final Cut, find these little sections and chop them out into little shorts for later. So this works really well if you have, say, a podcast. And that's Caption version 2.0. It's available now on the App Store. And if you have version one, you may already have it installed. And also be sure to join the Discord server to connect with other content creators and share your motion styles or download some of theirs. Some creators are also adding some compatible motion templates to their own stores, and they're gonna be sharing them on that Discord as well. So I hope Captioner works as well for you as it does for thousands of others. And leave a comment below with uh, links to your videos. I really wanna see everybody's videos out there uh, that they're using Captioner for. And I will see you around.